So these are spalted maple slabs that I milled up, I don't know, two years ago, maybe three years ago. And I made the mistake of milling them at two inches thick. Some of them are a little bit more than that, but I should have done like three inches thick. So the plan was to mill them in half again. That way I have an inch and an inch. But I'm finding out that it's really hard to get a precise inch because they're a little bit warped. After they dried for a while, they twisted and warped a little bit. So if I try to get an inch, some places are gonna be down to a half an inch and some places are gonna be up to like an inch and a half. The problem is it's not consistent. So I need to make panels that are a quarter inch thick. So I need to start out somewhere around 3 8 7 16 or so, so I can plane them down to a quarter of an inch. So it sounds good that one side is an inch and a half and the other side is a half an inch. The problem is it's not consistent. So it'll be little patches here and there that'll be half inch and then it'll be a lot bigger than that and then the other part's a lot smaller. So I'm kind of adjusting it a little bit so that I'm trying to get like an inch and a quarter, which this panel is about that, an inch and a quarter, and then whatever's left I'll use for the panels, which is about three quarters of an inch, but like I said, it varies a lot. So I put this LVL beam on here to make it a lot more flat. I was using one of those slabs, but it wasn't flat enough and it was rocking back and forth and stuff. So I put this LVL beam on here and then I strapped it down. So it's real tight so that it's nice and flat, it's super flat now. So that helps a lot, but also I'm not trying to rip them in half anymore. Now I'm trying to rip it like a third and two thirds. That way I know I'm going to have a lot of planing to do, but it's better than coming up short when I'm done and not having enough. Cause either I'm going to be short on styles and rails or I'm going to be short on panels and I don't want to be short on either. I could probably go and buy some slabs from somebody like on marketplace or something but I'm really trying to do it out of the tree that I got. This was a tree that I took down from my neighbor's lawn back when I lived in my other house. So the fact that I took the tree and milled it up into slabs adds some sentimental value to it. Some of this stuff has gotten punky. So that's why I said I might be a little bit short. If none of it was punky, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but like this spot here is very soft. I'm going to try some different things to maybe revive some of that. Maybe I can use some epoxy. So on all these slabs, I need to get one good straight side and then I can put it on the table saw. So I'm gonna put a straight edge on, rip it with a skill saw, and then all of them will have one nice straight side.
All right, so most of these slabs were about 68 inches long, 68 to 70 inches, almost six feet. So what I did is cut them in half, so they're about 34, 35 inches. And then I took them and put them on the joiner and got them flat on two sides. And the two sides that I got flat, I put an X and an X. And then when I put them through the planer, that X will go down because we know that that's straight and then the other side will get planed both ways. So luckily with cabinets, you're looking at about a 30 and a half inch piece. That's gonna be the most common piece that you use for the lower cabinets. For the upper cabinets, they need to be a little bit longer than that. I think they're almost 40 inches. But we're not worrying about any upper cabinets. I'm gonna get all the lower cabinets done first and see what I have left. And then we'll kind of go from there. And for all of the lower cabinets, they're all gonna have a 30 and a half inch piece. So that's 36 inches to the top of the countertop, minus an inch and a half for the countertop, so that's 34 and a half. And then you're gonna minus four inches for kick space, so that's 30 and a half. And the styles go vertically, and the rails go horizontally. The way that you can remember that is to remember rails, like on a train track, they're always going horizontal, so that's the rails. Styles go vertically. The styles is what we're making the most of right now because the rails are always gonna be shorter, or usually gonna be shorter than the style. So even if you have a cabinet that's 36 inches wide, you're only gonna be down to 32 inches with the rails. So these pieces are all ready to go into the planer. These pieces, I have to process them still, going through the joiner. Most of them are pretty decent and they don't need the joiner, but I'm just gonna send them all down through anyways. This one needs the joiner pretty bad. So you can see that one's got a big bow in it. So I'll face it like this down on the joiner and take off the two high spots that are facing down at that point. And I started out really thick. These are about an inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth because I knew I was gonna send them through the joiner. So it's gonna take off a lot of material at first. And then when you finalize it, you go through the planer. Look at that wood design. That's spalted maple for you. There's other species that have spalted effects on them, but spalted maple is one of the easiest to get to spalted because maple rots very quickly and very easily. So some of these are kind of punky, like this one's really, really light. It feels like a piece of styrofoam. So hopefully we can add some wood hardener and it'll be all right. These are gonna be the kind of thing where you don't wanna screw into them, you wanna screw through them. So in other words, when I use pocket screws, I'd wanna go like this to use them. I wouldn't want that piece to be the punky piece because I need the threads to pull into that. This piece is just gonna be drilled through, so we can use that. So we can use this piece to go through and it'll still have a lot of strength going that way. It just won't have a lot of strength when you screw into it. 
I'll get into all those details later about all the different fastening methods and what I'm going to use. So if you don't know what a joiner is, it's not a joiner, like J-O-I-N-E-R, it's a jointer, but everybody says it like joiner. Basically it takes a board that's warped, twisted, bent, and it straightens it out. So there's two different tables on here, there's the outfeed and the infeed. This blade is set at the same exact height as the outfeed. And basically every time you run it through here you keep it flat to this table and it takes out all the imperfections on this side as it's going through so if it's really bad and it's really warped i have it right now set for a 30 second so it might take three or four passes if it's really bad and so four passes at a 30 second would be taking off an eighth of an inch and this is just a cheap little tabletop system these are like 300 dollars and it's perfect for doing what I'm doing because I don't need anything wide and I don't need anything that's really long either. It is nice to have like a four foot table, but this one I think is 30 inches and it works just fine. So look down that and see, see how bad that is. It might not show up on camera that good, but it's about an eighth of an inch off in the middle. So in other words, this end here is sticking that way an eighth of an inch. And that end is sticking that way an eighth of an inch, so it's humped up in the middle. So you always want to take the cup and put it upward. So I'm going to run it through like that first, get that flat. And then I can use that flat side here to put against the fence over here and get the side or the edge. So then I have a perfect 90 degrees, which when you're saw milling stuff is very important because you don't always get 90 degrees from the sawmill. So now you can see that this edge is perfect and this edge is perfect. So now you would always want to face those sides down in the planer and now the other side will be perfect once you go through the planer. <laughs> Noah, what do you think of this? What do you think of this guy? Yeah, I love it. You love it? I love guys. You love this guy? It's blue. It's blue and orange and pink.
Airplane. Yeah, there's lots of airplanes around here. So I have enough of these rails and styles that I can get started on the cabinets now. So these are going to be the face frames. They're two inches wide and they're three quarters of an inch thick. So they have lots of character in them. You always want to start out in the corner or one of the corners anyways. So in this corner I drew everything out on the floor and I'm going to have a 45 degree part going right here. So they're going to come out here, they're going to come out here, and then there's going to be a flat part right here. So in the past I've done corner cabinets by basically building them in place. And you don't even put walls in them, you just use your regular sheetrock wall as the wall. But in this case, I'm going to build this cabinet so that I can take it out and put it back in. Because I still need to tape everything, but that's not really the reason I'm doing it. I'm just doing it to make a cleaner install. It looks cleaner when you have plywood on the inside instead of just a wall. Ultimately, when you get done, that cabinet's not going to see a lot of use, so it really doesn't matter. You could build it in place like I've done in the past. And basically, you just build it on the wall with some 2x4s, and you attach the sides, and then just put it together. But this one, we're going to make a full cabinet out of it. So these side panels here, there's going to be lots of them just like this with a 4-inch kick space. And then there's also going to be a baseboard on the inside. So because these face frames are going to be at a 45 to this cabinet, I ripped this on a 45 and basically this is how it's going to go like this. So I'm going to build this cabinet, put it here, and then I'm going to build the frame, the face of it, pocket screw that together, and then I'm going to put it on here like this. And normally when you're doing a regular 90 degree angle cabinet, I'm gonna dado out the back of the face frame so that it goes into this half inch plywood. This is half inch BC plywood. But because this is gonna be a 45 degree angle here, we're actually just going to put this here and not dado out the back. We're just gonna make a little piece that goes here on 22 degree angles and it's just gonna fit in there and I'm just gonna glue and nail it. But that's only going to be for this cabinet. The rest of them are going to be dadoed and then glued. And if you don't know what dadoed is, that's basically you're taking a chunk, the width of whatever you're going to go into it with. So be a half an inch wide and a quarter inch deep groove that's here to accept the half inch plywood. So one of the purposes of making this video is to show you that you can do a full set of kitchen cabinets without a wood shop, without fancy tools, without expensive tools, without a vast amount of knowledge. I don't consider myself a cabinet maker in any way, shape, or form, but I have done them before, so I know that they're possible. And just knowing that it's possible is a big step for most people.
All right, so this is a pretty wide span for a floor like this. So I could put like a joist, if you will, going across here or like there or even diagonal like that. But the easier thing to do is just measure from the bottom to here, which is three and three quarters. And I just took a two by four block and put it three, and I cut it three and three quarters and I just stuck it in there and nailed it. Cause that's all you need is something right in the middle. You don't need something going all the way across. So now that's super solid. Now I'm gonna leave this open here. That way when I install it, if the floor's at a level a little bit, I can still shim underneath it here all the way around. And I can shim that piece too if I need to. And then I can close this up with the kick space with the toe board there. But for right now, I can set this into place. I can install it basically, and then I can put my face frame on it after that. So that's what the face frame is going to look like on this cabinet because it's at a 45 degree angle. I have these 45 degree angles on it. This is the only one that's going to look like this though. And the reason for that is it's going to connect to the next cabinet, the face frame of the next cabinet. So in the past I've always done 5 inches for the height on this opening for the drawers. I'm going to do 6 inches just so I can have a little bit deeper of a drawer. And yes, it leaves an inch less here, but I think we got about 19 inches here. So, so that should still be pretty good for everything we need to put in there. So now I'm gonna pocket screw this all together. And a lot of times you would see if somebody's using pocket screws, they're gonna use plugs on them. I'm not gonna use any plugs because nothing's gonna be visible. The only time it would be visible, especially on the face frame, is if you actually stuck your head in the cabinet and looked behind it. On the doors, I'm probably still not going to use the plugs, even though when you open up the doors, you can see it. But I'm just not that concerned about it, and I can always add plugs later. For those of you that don't know what a pocket screw is, basically, you put it in this, you put the piece of wood in this jig, and it drills it at just the right precise angle through it to go from one board into another. And they're super strong, and they never come out the other side. Everything is in a jig so that it's just the right precise measurements. So the pocket hole would go on these pieces here. And then the screw would go in from that piece into this piece. But from the back side, this is the front side, so we got to flip it over. Basically, I got to flip that over, put the pocket screws right there into here. You want to make sure that this is on the setting for the right thickness, which is three quarters. It's got a little gauge down here. So you can again set it on three quarters. That controls the depth of the shoulder. This does. So I don't think it's totally necessary, but I like putting glue on these joints as well. And basically you want to use one of these clamps. You want to clamp that joint together so that it can't move up or down so that they're always on the same plane and then you can put the screw in. And I have this auto adjusting clamp, which usually works pretty good.
So now you have a nice strong face frame and when the glue dries it'll be super strong. So now this is just going to go over here like this, go right on here like that, and that's all ready to go.
I was going to leave this cabinet without drawers on it, but looking at it now, I think it just would look better if I just put drawers in it. It would just match everything else. That's a 40 inch cabinet. I need to do another 40 inch cabinet right there. And I'll do drawers on that too, although they're going to be fake because that's going to be the kitchen sink right there. I may do the ones that come out like this, I'm not sure. I don't think I really need to, but then we need to do a 48 inch cabinet there. This is a big onion right here. What is it? Onion. Look, there's some corn. And there's some more corn. Yeah. Corn. 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 Yeah. Corn. Yep. This is all corn. All corn. Yeah. Yep. We don't go that side. Everything is growing good this year. This is all potatoes. What is it? All potatoes. Potatoes, yeah. Potatoes? This was supposed to be strawberries. Potatoes? Mm -hmm. Strawberry Let's go check out the tomatoes. Tomatoes? Yep. Tomatoes. Man, these tomatoes are just taking off. <sighs> you cut them? No, they just fell over. Look, this this tomato plant has some tomatoes on it. Look at them things. Already. Uh, it's ready. only the beginning of July. They're ready? No, they're not ready. I said already. Uh, yeah. I think these are plum tomatoes. Plum tomatoes. Yeah, plum tomatoes. <gasps> You still got that chicken, huh? Why don't you just have a teddy bear instead of a chicken? I think that chicken is very fearful of you.
All right, so I've been having a lot of trouble with this plywood. This is BC plywood, which is not as good as AC. AC has a lot less imperfections in the side that is the good side, which is the side that I always face in on all these cabinets. BC has more imperfections, but I'm not worried about that at all. BC is perfectly fine for what I'm doing. There's just like little spots like this here and there, but AC plywood has some of that too. I'm not worried about that at all. What I'm worried about is all the bowing that's going on. Like you can see, I guess it doesn't show up that good on camera, but the bowing is just out of control. So this last cabinet that I built, the bowing was really bad. And so I put this piece in here, because both sides were cupped outward. So I put this in, and I had to pull this in a good inch and three quarters, almost two inches. That's how bad it was bowed. And yes, I made the mistake of cutting those in the wrong spot. I actually measured from the floor, and then when I cut it, I measured from the kick space. So I'll have to plug up those holes there. But anyways, so moving forward, I got a different kind of plywood and it's gonna look a little different, but it's all inside the cabinets and you can only see it when the doors are open. Look at how bad this, this bowed here. That's one of the better ones too. They're all like really bowed. And they're not just bowed, they're twisted and bowed too. So for the same price, at a different box store, I got this stuff. And this is 12 millimeter sanded plywood. And it's got a very, very thin layer of veneer on it. I think one side is a little thicker than the other. So this stuff was actually the same price and it's way better. It's curved right now just because of the way it's sitting, but when I was looking at it in the store, this stuff is like super straight. It's like 10 times better. So we're gonna use this. It's a different color, different wood, different pattern, but like I said, it doesn't matter. It's inside of the cabinets. The one place where you would want to have the best looking plywood is on the upper cabinets, because they're at eye level. And when you open the cabinets, you'll see them a lot easier. And I am considering putting frosted glass in the uppers, which you won't be able to see through it, but I think there will be parts of it that you can see through it. So I hate the idea of switching plywood at this stage, since I already used all this plywood here. And I definitely don't want to go back and redo all these. So this is not ideal to do this, but I think it's for the better because after fighting with this panel right here, it was just apparent that I needed to do something different. And honestly, in the past, on the end cabinets where you're going to see this, which is going to be this next one, I have put a quarter inch veneer on the outside, maple veneer, and that looks pretty good. But I think that other plywood is good enough where I could actually just leave that as the face over here and that would be fine. I don't want to do it with that plywood. That's not good enough plywood for that. But that other stuff seems like it's good enough. As long as you don't sand it too much because it's a very, very thin layer of veneer. It's paper thin, so you can sand right through it. But over here, we're gonna have an exposed end, and then over there, we're gonna have an exposed end, and I think I can get away with using this. So it's good that we switch now because these are the last cabinets before we get to that point. Here's another example of it. Again, it looks a lot worse in person than it does on camera.
I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a rainbow that starts right there and goes up and around and ends about there. Pretty crazy weather we've been having lately. I don't think this video is even as orange as it really is in person. Because it's really orange out right now. Everything around is just like yellow. Crazy. Okay, so all these cabinets are permanently installed now and I made a nice little platform to store all my tools and supplies. I just took some of these panels here and just laid them across here. These are the thinner ones that I'm going to make the quarter inch panels that go in the doors for. I'm just using them to store all the tools. So I need to work on making this island now. So I don't know, it doesn't really show up on camera, but from there to there, to there, to there. So it's three feet wide and it is about five and a half feet long, almost six feet long. It's gonna have like a foot of overhang on this side for the countertop, on this side it's not. So the plan for this is I'm gonna have a 30 inch wide drawer for silverware and then underneath of it I'll have two doors and then over here, I'm gonna do deep drawers. I'm gonna do three of them, and they're about 32 inches wide, and they're gonna be like a foot deep or so. So that's the plan for here. And then I'm only coming out two feet with them. So then I'm gonna utilize this other foot left here. I'm gonna put a divider, a piece of plywood in the middle, and I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna put three doors here, and I'm gonna use this to store pans and pots. So since this is only a foot wide here, going all the way across, I figured if I had put a piece of plywood there, then I can put hangers on that plywood and I can hang the pans in there from their handles. And then I can have a few doors here to access them. Because I don't want drawers that are three feet long. That's just too long for a drawer. So two feet is good, just like a normal cabinet would be. And then the other foot will be utilized for the pans and pots. I'll show you what I mean when I get into it. And that side is going to have full height doors instead of having drawers on the top like everything else does. So I got all my styles and rails for the island made up. Everything is jointed, planed, and within spec. And just so you guys know, the way I've been doing this, I've been using this digital caliper to get my two inches wide and get my three quarters of an inch thick. And it's pretty important that you do that because otherwise you end up with a lot of variance if you're using just a tape measure. There's so much variance that you can have with a tape measure. You could be like a sixteenth off from one to the next if you're not really careful. So rather than do that, I'm going to get everything exactly right down to the hundredth of an inch.
So see, this is what I was talking about. I wanted this extra foot here to be able to have room to put pans and pots and stuff. And I'll put hangers in here. That way I can hang the pans and pots on there and I can open a door and get to it. But everything is closed when the door is closed and you can't see anything. That way it keeps the pans hidden. You could even put like a pan on the side here and a pan on the side there, like some of the smaller ones. And I'll probably hang them like one lower, one higher, one lower, one higher. And that way they can kind of get closer together so that it's not just like four pans across. Maybe I can get six or seven, depending on how big they are. And these doors will be, I think that's like an 18 inch opening there. So that'll be a big door. It'll require a big panel going in between it, but that'll look really neat. It'll take a lot of work and it'll take some big panels to make that, but I think it'll look really neat because you can see that from the rest of the room, like the living room and the dining room here. And that'll be like the feature spot right there that'll have the, the most amount of panels on it, which the panels are gonna look cool. They're gonna be like one of the coolest things on here, just the panels that are in between the doors. So I still need to put a floor on that, but since I'm going all the way down to the floor and there's no toe kick there, I'm going to come up like an inch and then put the floor there. It's going to be flush with the top of here. So that'll hide the floor that's underneath of it. And then this one I made the same as all the other ones with the floor up above the toe kick, like four inches up. So that's in there. That's good. This one doesn't need it because I'm going to have drawers in here and the drawers have a floor. So. The only time you can actually see the floor is if you open up the drawer all the way, you might be able to peek in there and see something, but I'm not worried about it. It's not worth putting a floor in here for that. So I was gonna do three drawers here, but I decided that they weren't much deeper than that, which is six inches. I think they were like maybe seven inches. So I figured rather than have three seven inch drawers, I'll have two of these bigger drawers, which I don't know how much they are, but that seems like it's a lot better to have a deep drawer. I want just like as many options as possible. I don't have enough kitchenware to fill up everything here, but down the road, I'm sure I'll keep accumulating more and more. And so remember, we're gonna work on the uppers and actually that's next. That's the next thing I wanna do. I don't wanna start making any doors or drawers until everything is made as far as the carcasses. So we'll do a nice size one right there. We'll do a corner one right there. And then we'll do one up top there to hang the microwave and vent. And then another one right here.
And I could also use it in conjunction with the glue.
so that's what every door is going to look like on the bottom. That's exactly what it looked like in my other house too. I did the doors a little bit differently, well a lot of bit differently actually, in the other house. I was trying something new here to make it a little bit more streamlined. In my other house, to join the styles and rails for this cabinet door, I was doing a mortise and tenon so you could see the notch. There would be a tongue in this piece and a groove in this piece and it would slip in and it would have glue. But then that was just getting complicated because you only wanted it on this last little bit and and to do that it was just getting complicated, it was too time consuming. And I know a lot of woodworkers swear by the mortise and tenon but I just wanted something that was a little faster than that, a little easier to work with because I'm not really a woodworker. So then I started just doing the pocket screws and I could put the plugs in there and make it look nice but honestly I don't really care. The back of these doesn't have to look pretty. So what I was doing was making a groove in this piece all the way down that was a quarter of an inch. And then the panel would slip into there because that's quarter of an inch. And then the rails would slip into there. And the problem is you'd put it together and the glue would come out of the joints and it would go into the corner where the panel slipped in and then it would kind of glue the panel in place and you don't want that. You want this panel to be able to move. And what happened was a couple of them caught with the glue and it made it so it couldn't move and it ended up cracking this because when it expands, because it couldn't move so it made a crack in it. So then I started using a lot less glue and I would just keep glue on the top here and that seemed to work a lot better. None of those cracked. The problem with that method is if you ever want to replace that panel, you can't. You got to replace the whole door. So not like I think I'm going to replace a bunch of these panels, but I just thought, well, if I'm going to do all these doors from scratch again, let me see if I can come up with a different way to do it where I can replace them if I need to, where I can replace the panels instead of the whole door. So that's why I came up with this idea and I brought the router in and made a quarter inch rabbit out of there. and. And that way it's sitting in there like a piece of glass would do. And so the idea is now, if I ever want to replace this panel, I can just very carefully pop these pieces off, which you can't even really see it, but that piece right there has just got a couple brad nails, uh, five-eighths of an inch long. And they're just kind of like very delicately put in there. And so if I want to replace this panel, I can just take a pry bar and pop these off and then the panel will come out. I was going to glue these pieces in but then I'm right back to the same thing where I don't know if I could really get that out if it was glued in. So what would be the point? So that's why I just started putting nails in it. And these are just little quarter inch strips um, from actually ripping these pieces down. We just Once we get these the actual size on the table saw we end up with a few pieces like these. So I figured Let's just use those. And it would be really nice if the router would get a sharp corner into here and then I could just put these around the whole thing and it would look good. But there's not really a way to do that. And I could chisel it out and I, I just don't feel like taking the time to do that. So that's why I just rounded the panel to fit in there. And I can just put a few of these pieces here and there and it doesn't have to fill the whole gap everywhere it's around. So I got two long pieces on the side, I got one piece on the bottom, one piece on the top. And so, yeah, it doesn't look the best on the back side, but really who cares? The front looks great. It's really tight, nice and consistent. And it took so much less time to do it like this than to do it any other way that I've been doing. And so you saw I got this little Craig jig that just sort of sits there and it holds the door right at the right place, which is half inch. I got a half inch overlay door. So it overlays a half an inch on the top and the bottom and then on the sides. So you always want to make sure the door is an inch wider and an inch taller than the opening. And I got the soft close hinges, which you can adjust so they close really slow or kind of medium slow. Or you can even turn them off so they don't do that. I wish they would make hinges that would also do the soft open too because I know people love slamming the doors open too. You know they just slam them open like that and it like shakes the whole cabinet. I wish they had a hinge where right when it got to the end they would just dampen 
a little bit, but it is what it is. I guess having them soft closed is better than nothing. So Craig jigs are always really nice. And this is another cool little one that I got that basically you put this on the style and it's got a little stop right here, which you can adjust. It's got like a camber caster kind of adjustment on there. So you can adjust it so that I have it set so it's 3 16 away from the edge for the hinge. And basically you just put this to the bottom of the style, just line that right up. That lines up with there, so you got positive stops going both ways. So you just kind of slam it there, clamp it, screw in, and then you take this out, and it actually has two little pilot holes that you can use for your pre-drill going into the style for the two screws that go into the style there. And I love the way that they made these hinges uh, square drive now instead of Phillips. That's so much better. And even that one is a Phillips and square drive. That is so much of an improvement from the ones that I had even last year. So they must have made a, an improvement in the last year. So once you got this hole drilled, it's an inch and three eighths, these hinges just drop right in. You keep them parallel. If you have the pilot already drilled, then you just slap them in, slap the screws on, slap this thing on here, clamp it, put the door on there, the door stays, you don't even have to do anything, put your pilot holes in there, put your screws in, boom, it's streamlined. I got a lot of doors to do, so it's really nice that all this is streamlined. Because now I can just fly right along. And, um, you know, normally this takes a, a considerable amount of time to do for all these doors, but it should go a lot quicker. So I didn't show it, but here's a couple of the panels that I made. And I made sure that they got lots of character on them. Like that's part of a burl right there. And that's the spalted effect. And then you even got little wormholes there too. So I'm going to try to make sure that most of the panels have those features. Because I do have some maple that doesn't have a whole lot of character in it, but most of it does. So I should be able to get lots of panels. Um, these panels are not very wide, but those ones are going to be, and they're tall too. These ones are a little bit wider than those ones, but not too much. But by the time you come in with the styles, it's not as wide as you think.
So these soft close hinges, they have a switch on them so you can turn them off. And I find that with both of them on, it closes way too slow. So what I do is I turn one off and leave one on. And that way it's still got a dampening effect, but it doesn't take forever to close. So if you leave this on, it just takes forever to close. I just don't really like that. So this one only has one on. So that's just perfect. So I got six down and I got three, four, five, six, seven, eight to go. But these four were the hardest because they have the widest panels and I really had to scrimp and scrounge to get those panels because they needed 14 and three quarters wide and they all need to be, I think it was 16 inches tall or 16 and a quarter tall. But getting these panels that are 14 and three quarters wide without having a huge punky spot or a huge hole or a huge rotten spot or a huge knot or just in general, just getting that width was a, was a major ordeal. So now everything is a lot less and I have the panels here to finish the rest of the lowers. So that's good. But you can see like, you really gotta, gotta watch what you got. What happened is this one was wide enough, but then bringing it through the planer, it was punky here and it just broke that piece off. So that was one of the pieces that was supposed to be 14 and three quarters, but I had to make a new piece because that one broke. And then these are some of the narrower ones. And they have a lot of wormholes and stuff. And I was worrying about those at first, but now I'm like, I don't have enough material to be worrying about that. So we're gonna deal with the wormholes. Most people would like the wormholes. I don't mind them. I just would rather not have them if I don't have to. I can always take these doors off, scratch out the sawdust from these wormholes lay them flat down and then put some epoxy in them. I'll strengthen it right up again. I can always actually take all these off because they're really flimsy. They're only a quarter of an inch. So they're, they're like a sponge. So they feel like balsa wood. They're so light and airy. That weighs like an ounce because it's just so punky. So if I find that they start splitting and cracking and stuff, I can always take them off and just do a flood coat of epoxy to keep them together. And even if there's a crack, the epoxy will keep it together. Even if the crack separated, it'll keep it together from there on. But most of the time, if you want that nice spalted look, the board is kind of going to be compromised. These ones aren't too bad. They still got a little bit of strength left to them, but you really got to catch them at the right time because if you let them go too long and they're wet that spalted effect is like mold and it'll eat away and it'll just keep eating away at it making these doors is like a 10 minute job once you got all the styles and rails and you got the panel cut out the problem is getting the styles and rails jointed down and planed down and then cut is where the time consuming part is and then of course these panels they're kind of time consuming because you gotta run them through the planer and, and you really gotta carefully select the right areas so that you don't end up with a big hole in it or something. That takes the most amount of time. Once you've got everything ready, actually assembling and then installing the door to assemble it and install it, you could probably do it in 10 minutes a piece, maybe 15 if you're slow. But you could have a half an hour into getting the pieces ready for it. Trying to get 
this I can drill a hole so I can do the same thing Dad did. Weird black. You don't have to put it in reverse when you take it out. You can keep driving forward. I'm sorry. All right, hang on. Let Robo do it for a minute. Look at that. Hey, wait. Safety glasses first. Safety glasses. How are you? Pick up the drill. Oh, wait. Hold on. You didn't... Here, go. It wasn't fully in. No, keep going. Keep going down. Going down. Push down. You gotta go all the way down. Push down. Push. There you go. Alright, now back it out. Back it out.
So I also have two panels left over just in case somebody kicks one or breaks one by accident or maybe it cracks or splits or something, which a little crack or split I'm not going to worry about. I could epoxy it and sand it, but what do you guys think of that? That looks really cool. Not something you see every day, especially with these panels in the middle. I've never seen that before. That took a lot of work. And then these here, I just did a solid three quarter inch panel because there was no point in going through all that effort just to make a little tiny sliver of panel in the middle. So just make the whole thing a door. And remember, these look useless, but you could put a lot of cookie sheets in there and a lot of pizza pans in there. So. Everything's a huge mess around here. I'm just trying to get this done. I'm trying to fly through it so I can get it done and clean all this up. If I clean it up now, I'm just going to be making more mess. So I'm getting there though. What do I say? I'm probably about, what, 60% done with everything. I still got to do all the drawers and then I got to do all the uppers and then I got to do those. This is a huge project. I'm not going to lie. This is something that is probably almost as much work as putting the roof on this place. Maybe not quite, but it's definitely the second biggest project besides the roof on this house. I put up these first four walls in half the time that it's going to take me to finish this. So if you think of this house building segments, this segment is the second largest segment of the whole house. So the next thing I'm going to work on is going to be the drawers. So I'm going to do the same thing I do with that which is just a solid three quarter inch panel for every drawer. I'm not gonna worry about styles and rails. That's just too much work. So since the last time I've made cabinets, in particular drawers, I've changed everything about it up. So everything is kind of new to me and I'm doing a whole different method. So let me show you what I've come up with. I just did this one already and I made it out of a half inch sanded plywood. And so basically, you can see how I got the overlaps. The piece on the bottom is glued and nailed. And the pieces on the side are glued and nailed. And what I was doing before was using three quarter for everything. But this plywood works really good for this. And it allows you to have just a little bit more drawer space too because the three quarter takes up more space. So this is a six inch opening. This is a five and a half inch drawer, which means I have five inches of clearance on the inside and I think these are 22 inches long and I'm using the soft close slides full extension and I'm using this Craig jig to set it up which is really nice I never used this before but also I never read the directions before when I was doing these for my old house and what I was doing was I was blocking this out I was taking a block and putting it in here to attach this slide to but I didn't realize that you could buy these little brackets here and just put these little blocks on the end and just attach to it and you're done because this is like an inch and a sixteenth which is not a big deal I could easily do that but then when it came time to the middle here I had to do all kinds of crazy stuff to put in a block here for both sides and it just got kind of crazy when I never realized that all I had to do was just put that block there which I just used two pieces of half inch plywood, just scraps that I had. I glued and nailed it onto there. And then you can just put this little bracket on here and this slide slides into that bracket and then you're done. So this is like streamlined and like three times, four times faster than what I was doing before. So a lot of the work in this kitchen is really repetitive. So I end up putting it on time lapse and putting a bunch of music on here. I know a lot of people don't really like that but if I didn't do that, I, I don't know, it would just get really boring doing the same thing over and over again. So I figured speeding it up and time-lapsing it with a little bit of music is probably the least boring thing. So I've been, I've been kind of showing what I do a little bit in real time and then I just fast forward everything. But for these drawers, I don't really see a point in doing that because they really are like all the same. And there's no like designs that you can see as I'm going along because it's all just plywood. 
So I'll show you how I make one and then I'll show you how I install it and then I'll show you putting the face on it, which is last. I'd like to do that last. And then I'm just gonna finish the rest of them on my own. I don't really need to record it. The only reason I even put all this stuff on time lapse is because there was a lot of really cool designs and everything. So I figured as I was going along, you could see all the different patterns and designs and colors and stuff on this spalted maple, which is kind of neat. If it didn't have all that and it was just like straight clear wood, then I wouldn't have done that.
So one last thing I need to do to get this ready for a countertop is I want to put some 45 degree pieces in corners here. That way I can attach the countertop from underneath. So when I put the countertop up there, I can drill from the bottom of this into the countertop. That way the countertop is removable easily without destroying things. So I want to put one of these in each corner. And that also helps them so they don't rack as much. This is just three quarter CDX plywood. It might help a little bit with the bowing here, but it's not going to help too much because it's not brought out into the middle more. What do you think, Bob? I love it. Love it? All right, so here's the plan. The upper cabinets are gonna wait for the doors. I didn't have enough styles and rails that were dry enough. So I milled up some more. And the plan for these upper doors is, and these doors right here, I'm gonna pour some epoxy in a mold and use them as a panel. So I'm gonna take some sheets of melamine, put it on this table, and cordon off different sections for the different panels and I'm gonna pour the panels solid epoxy. So it's gonna have some color in them. So I'm gonna start out with like quarter inch thick and then I'll send them through the planer and they'll probably end up 3 16 or so, which is plenty for these panels. Because even at 3 16 it'll be a lot stronger than any of these panels that are quarter of an inch. So the idea is that I'm gonna use some translucent colors in the epoxy and I'm also gonna do another small thin coat of clear coat epoxy on top. So I'm gonna do two different pours. That way all these uppers will have see-through kind of effects on them. So I also ordered a bunch of LED lights and I'm gonna put LEDs everywhere, on top of the cabinets, inside of the cabinets, and underneath the cabinets for the over counter lighting or the under cabinet lighting. These ones are gonna have lighting in them too. And for the bottom cabinets, those are also gonna have lighting, but those are gonna be battery operated and motion sensor because the only time that it needs to turn on is when you open the cabinet. So a battery will last a long time doing that, especially with LEDs. And they'll just be like white. But everything else is gonna be able to be selected with colors. 
So the panels are going to have certain colors on them, but also there's going to be some clear spots in them so that if I change the light to like blue, then the blue will come through the clear part or red or whatever comes through. So while I would have liked to get the uppers done with the doors and everything just to be complete, I can still make use of these the way they are and I can always put the doors on later, but I will make a separate video about that. And it's going to take a few weeks for the styles and rails to dry. I'm probably going to make some sort of kiln for it, like a, just a small kiln just to get those done. And the epoxy is on the way, I should have it in a few days, so in a few weeks you can expect a video about those panels and the doors and everything going in and I'll probably include the lighting and by that time the countertop will be done so then that will be the final step in here. So the finish I started out with was that spar urethane and it had a satin finish and I didn't like that at all, it just had too much shine. So I ended up using a water-based polyurethane and it had a matte finish. So I'm much happier with the results of that. There's no shine at all. And the smell wasn't really bad either. You can see that finish made everything really pop. There's some really cool parts, like that part right there looks like 3D. Any place where there's like a burl like that looks really neat. I really like that. It was the same thing in my last house. gives it that really deep, clear, but 3D look. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Not every piece has a lot of character on it, but most of them do. Like this piece doesn't have a whole lot of character, but it's still got some colors in it. So I wasn't kidding when I said that this was the second biggest project on this house. It's probably been almost three weeks to get these cabinets done. Now that's not like solid eight hours a day, but it's probably close to it. It's probably at least two weeks of solid eight hours a day, maybe a few more days than that. Not really sure, I haven't been keeping track, but there's a lot, a lot of hours into this kitchen right now. And you can figure that at least a third of those hours were just processing these pieces to get them to the point where you can use them. If I had all these pieces just ready to go that were three quarter inch sheets of whatever that I could just chop up and, and put it together, then I would have literally cut off like a week out of this project. But being that you have to process every piece from a raw piece of wood that came from a tree and nothing was straight or square or you know they were twisted and bowed so getting that process down and selecting just the right pieces there's a lot of these panels that I really had to go through and chop like every single little sliver off that I could to, just to make it work like some of these panels the wider ones there would be like rotten pieces here and rotten pieces here and then over here it would be like curved in so you had to like really, like some of these were down to the sixteenth of an inch to get them to work. And like literally if it was sixteenth less it wouldn't have worked. It would have been like showing right here. I actually really like the hardware where it comes straight out through two pieces and then it looks like a T kind of. And then it's got like the bar that sticks out on both sides. I really like those but I found that in my other house you end up catching your pants pockets or the belt loops or just things that are on your pants you catch them on those and then you end up ripping your pants or you end up like ripping the drawer so while I don't really like these that much they do eliminate all that problem and I really like pull handles instead of knobs and for this upper right here above the microwave and vent I'm gonna do like a strut on it so it's gonna be one door that goes like this and you're gonna open it up like this and it's gonna have a strut so it stays open so that's going to be kind of neat. These drawers are really nice. Having a really deep, wide drawer like that, I think one of these is going to be for bread. And I'm not sure, I don't really know how I'm going to configure everything, but I know that this will be the utensils drawer. And then these will be for like spatulas and big wooden spoons and stuff like that. So there's two of them, you can kind of separate them. 
And having this drawer in here is really nice too. And I'll probably have a Lazy Susan on the bottom. And you can put stuff like a juicer, a blender, and stuff that you don't use every day. You can put it on that Lazy Susan. So that way you can store like a lot of the bigger, small appliances that you don't use every day that don't stay on the counter. And then up here, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but probably like a double decker Lazy Susan for spices and stuff. Like I said, that area there is probably gonna be for pots and pans, but there is gonna be an overhang, probably you know, 10 to 12 inches. So I don't know if that's gonna be exactly the best place for pots and pans because of that overhang, so we'll see. Maybe it's better suited for something else, like maybe that can be like a mini library there for books and stuff, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go, but I know I have plenty of places to put things. It's just a matter of figuring out what can go where. So the next video I'm gonna do here is gonna be the countertops. I am gonna go with epoxy countertops, and you guys don't wanna miss out on that video because I'm gonna do some really neat stuff in there. There's gonna be LEDs infused into the countertops, and so it's not gonna be your regular epoxy countertop. There's definitely gonna be some extras in there. But I already got all the stuff to make the epoxy countertop, so I'm ready to get going on that like today, and we'll get that going. That'll be pretty quick, and I'll see you guys on that video. Don't, don't move. 